Hi, good to see you. I'm Max, and in this video, we will talk about why all the decentralized applications will move from the main chain to layer two solutions. But before we start, just check today actually, and still 60% of you guys aren't following us on YouTube. So 60% of the people watching this video don't follow us and are missing out on our daily videos about Cardano. Because yes, we post on a daily basis uh, one video every day about Cardano, and we also tweet on a daily basis. So you're missing uh, uh, out on a, a, just a ton of stuff, actually. <laughs> so make sure to subscribe. Now, let's get into it. So the current situation with Layer 2 solutions is incredibly simple. And the way it looks like is that there are layer two solutions, but no one uses them, <laughs> right? Uh, Bitcoin has the Lightning Network. While the Lightning Network is technically pretty interesting, um, in reality, the adoption is just not there, unfortunately. Um, you know, I've been in crypto since, I guess, more than three years now, nearly four. Um, Never use the Lightning Network. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Don't know if that's uh, if, if that's just me or if that's just normal, but you know, never used it. Uh, and I, I don't know any exchange actually which also uses the Lightning Network. I, I know Kraken recently announced that they would be integrating the Lightning Network in 2021, but it's the only exchange I'm, I've heard of which will integrate the Lightning Network or which has already integrated it. Um, so you know. Just for Bitcoin, for example, layer two solution dead, right? No one uses it. When you look at Ethereum, layer two solutions dead too, actually, right? Uh, the, 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 there are multiple uh, layer two solutions on Ethereum. There's uh, XDAI chain, there is um, uh, Optimism, uh, which is a, a roll up solution. Um, the, the, like, the, the, there, are, there are the ZK roll ups. Um, these are all solutions which are very rarely used, right? I know uh, Gitcoin, which is a crowdfunding tool, and uh, some other things too, actually, but it's primarily known for its crowdfunding tool, uh, which is based on Ethereum. They have integrated uh, ZK Sync, which is essentially a tool which allows you to pay with uh, using ZK rollups. It's essentially it makes it much faster, I guess. <laughs> Simply put, that's it. It's more scalable, um, but. They are also still using the main Ethereum chain because I know that 99% of their customers will be using uh, the Ethereum main chain and not ZK rollups. So Ethereum 2 actually, then, like, no one uses it. Um, and you know, when you look at other chains, there aren't that many layer 2 solutions because, you know, layer 2 solutions tend to be built on top of chains which are big enough for it to be used. So that's the key, that's the current situation. Like nearly no layer two solutions actually been used being used. But there are a ton out there, right? So when you look at Ethereum, the ecosystem is huge. There's Darkware, there's Optimism, there is Zika Lorlops, there is um XDI chain, there is uh you know plenty of them. <laughs> plenty. Um in the future, however, this will change. And the reason why this will change is because you are going to have a ton of people making transactions on the network, which will make it incredibly expensive to execute transactions on the network, especially when you are having affairs with dApps, which make kind of useless transactions and a lot of transactions, right? If you have a game um, where you know, each item in the game is an NFT, for example. Well, you're speaking of hundreds of thousands of transactions uh, every minute, right? It's, it's a ton of transactions. And these are the type, uh, the type of things which currently the current smart contract blockchains can't handle, whether it's Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot. You have to be realistic here, right? Uh, Charles can say <laughs> as much as he wants about how scalable Cardano is, there will obviously still be a limit. And when you reach mass adoption, that limit will be, in my opinion, very, very quickly reached. 
So we have to be realistic here. Um, you won't be able to make all your transactions on the main chain. It will just be too expensive. Now, what will happen, however, is that you will probably only make transactions on the main chain when you will be dealing with important transactions, with huge sums of money, where you don't want to take any risks. Right? There is this notion of, of, of security in regards with these layers. Right, The main layer is the most secure one. Right? There is zero abstraction, zero, um, zero hidden costs, right? zero... Uh, th there is no impact on the security because you are at the base layer, right? When you go on the second layer, well, or second layer, <laughs> you, you you start um, you start to be uh, like there, there are sometimes costs, right? There are sometimes costs in terms of security to increase speeds. There are sometimes costs in terms of decentralization to increase speeds, right? Um, the, the, there is this blockchain trilemma, uh, which you may know about, which is that you, you have uh, on one side you have scalability, on the other side you have decentralization, and on the, the, the final side you have security. And you can have two of them, but not the three together, right? You can have scalability and security, but then you will not have decentralization. You can have decentralization and scalability, but then you will lack security. And you can have security and decentralization, and then you will lack scalability. Um, and so most of these layer two solutions are focusing on scalability. It's just all about scalability because one way or another, they have to make uh, concessions. They have to sacrifice something. And usually this is going to be centralization. Usually it can also be security. It can also be security, but usually it will be decentralization because it's it's the less evil, I guess, right? It's better to have uh, less decentralization than having less security. But it also means that when you have a less decentralized network, your network is also more at risk, right? So what that means is that you will probably be using layer two solutions for, um, for games, for social apps, for all these things where it doesn't really matter, right? It wouldn't be, uh, it, it would be very annoying if there were, there were, there were to have a security problem or decentralized problem, whatever, but it wouldn't be dramatic. You wouldn't lose your home, right? Uh, losing your home, <laughs> that's the main chain's responsibility. <laughs> Layer two solutions, you will probably only play games, social apps, um, just, you know, quick services, right? Nothing fancy. When you will be dealing with huge sums of money, that's when you hit the main chain. That's just how it kind of looks like, in my opinion. Now, there are a lot of things to take into consideration because I'm not here speaking about layer two solutions, but this is specifically actually for Ethereum because on Cardano, uh, if you have seen my uh, network layer video, uh, if you don't, please watch it before, because otherwise you will not understand the following content. Uh, <laughs> um, in regards with Cardano, well, you have Cardano SL and you have Cordano CL. So Cordano SL is the settlement layer, right? It's the main chain. It's this highly secure chain where, which is only made to store funds and execute transactions. It's kind of like a banking network, right? It's just... And you just do you only do that on it. It's just highly secure, only for uh, monetary transactions, nothing more. That's it. That's the settlement layer. That's Cardano SL. And then you have Cardano CL, which is the computational layer. And the computational layer, you can you can see that as the internet. It's, it's the apps. And so the financial layer of the internet is always isolated from the apps, right? Uh, when you want to interacts with uh, an app, financially speaking, of the internet, you go through a dedicated financial service. You could call it the Cardano SL, which is, for example, PayPal, uh, using a bank transfer and that kind of stuff. So there's this isolation. You know, you have these internet services, and then you have the, these financial services, which are very secure, and then you, you, you have links. Well, it's, it's the exact same thing with Cardano SL and Cardano CL. Cardano SL, all your friends are there right now. That's the, the chain where our ADA is, is Cardano SL. And in the future, with Gogun, 
you will have Cardano CL, the computation layer. That's where all the transactions will be. In the, uh, all the smart contracts, sorry, uh, all the tr smart contracts will be whether it's with Plutus or Malo. And we'll probably also have other, uh, yeah, and uh, so Cardano SL is a sidechain from Cardano SL, uh, Cardano CL is a sidechain from Cardano SL. So Cardano SL, and then you have here, like it's kind of like, like a tree, right? Cardano SL, and then you have a, a branch, and that's Cardano CL. And you, you have another branch, which is another sidechain for a specific programming language, and so on and so on. So essentially, what, what I'm trying, trying to, to tell you here is that Cardano has essentially a native layer 2 solution. And that, that's the thing, right? Because Ethereum, when you look at Ethereum, when you look at the structure, everything is happening on the same chain. Everything. Whether you transact funds, whether you use smart contracts, whatever you do, it's on the main chain. Um, in the future, like I said before, you will probably use it differently, but that's just the way you use it. You, you aren't forced by the design of it. You, you, you could use you could do everything on the main chain if you want in the future. It will just cost you, uh, cost you a lot of money. On Cardano, this is not possible. On Cardano, settlement layer only for monetary transactions, computation layer only for uh, smart contract interactions. And so that's where it, it gets interesting because you could you could argue actually that Cardano has a native scalability solution built into it actually. When you think about it, that's that's kind of it. Um, and so this is the competition layer. And on top of that, on top of that, you could even think about adding a layer two solutions on top of that competition layer. So you would essentially have a layer three solution where you could even make the competition layer even more scalable. And so that's the reason why I think most um, most smart contracts will eventually end up, well, on Cardano, by design, they will end up on layer two solutions, by design, because Cardano CL is a, is a, is a layer two solution. Like, for example, um, if these other sidechains for the other programming languages will also be sidechains, and also layer two solutions in a sense. But you might also get, on top of that, um, layer three solutions. And on Ethereum, I'm ne nearly, nearly willing to bit my hands. <laughs> that, that's risky. <laughs> I, I, I will not do it, by the way. <laughs> I'm just saying it. Uh, but I'm nearly willing to bit, bit my hands that, um, that, that most people will end up just using layer 2 solutions uh, for most of their, uh, of, of their interactions with Ethereum. Uh, and when you look at your digital life, when you, when you look at how you use the, the internet, most interactions you make with the web aren't that important, right? You are interacting with social apps uh, that doesn't require high level security. You don't, you don't need to pay five bucks a transaction for that <laughs> and you wouldn't want to do it uh, to post a picture on Instagram, that, that paying five bucks for a transaction that would be ridiculous. Uh, but only your true solution, entirely possible, right? Um, you are watching videos on YouTube well, you don't need to have high-level security for that. That's just that doesn't make sense. Uh, doing, I guess you know, uh, writing uh, writing things. Whether whether it's like using uh, the Google suite of apps like uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, and that, that kind of stuff. Again, you don't need that much security, right? It's not like it's 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 super uh, super important if something happens. It doesn't also really matter whether it's that decentralized or semi-decentralized. Again, it's not your threat level is is, 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 is lower than if you were to transact $10,000 in, in ADA. And so that's the reason why, in my opinion, you will end up only using smart contracts uh, which don't involve large monetary transactions on layer two solutions. That's it. That's the only thing you need to remember is that probably financial transactions will probably all end up on the main chain and then you will probably only use the layer the uh, the other smart contracts or layer two solutions if you like this video please leave a like please follow us on youtube and and on twitter 
Uh, you have our Twitter actually here, here at PoA Pool. We post on a daily basis about Cardano, uh, so please make sure to follow us. And um, and yeah, I think I think that's it. Please leave a comment if you liked the video. Please show your appreciation, and uh, and yeah, share it with all your friends, neighbors, family, lovers, kids, uh, dog, cats, rats, uh, elephants. Yeah, that's a bit difficult. Uh, <laughs> see you tomorrow. Bye.